It's more fun to read about how to change your life than it is to actually change your life. Hey everyone, welcome to another awesome Champion Reads Book Club. We have an amazing book today that we're going to cover. One of the, one of the best books um, that many people would say is in their top 10, top 5, maybe even top 3 list. I'm William Blake, a dyslexic and empowerment coach and one of the executive producers. As well with me is Ian Sturmer, a number one best-selling author, uh, and he... And also an amazing executive producer as well for the show. Let's jump into it. The book we're going to talk about today, Atomic Habits by James Clear. And I got to say, I've seen more videos on TikTok and YouTube and Instagram recently with James Clear actually talking. I don't know if he's getting more into videos and such, but it's great to be able to see those short clips. And he talks a lot about Atomic Habits and everything that goes in with it. So let's start a discussion about, let's just start off like, why habits? I'll throw it to you, Ian, first off. Why do we need habits? You know, I love habits because I'm lazy, to be honest. <laughs> I don't want to work hard. And if I can create a habit that I don't need to think about, and I just do, my life is easier. I don't have to stress about it. You know, I don't have to worry about how to drive to my office because it's so easy. I do it so often that quite often I pull into my parking lot and I stop and think, I hope there was nothing dangerous on the way here because I didn't even notice it. <laughs> didn't take any thought at all. Uh, but the more of these habits we can do, that we can create, then the less we need to stress about our life, the less we need to to worry and stress over goals and those things because these habits are going to move us there without us having to worry about it once we create the habit yeah <laughs> yeah that's we create a habit editor. yeah that that's so interesting because i can't tell you how many times i've driven on the road and leave let's say like walmart drive back to my house, which is like a 15 minute drive and pull in the driveway and totally forget uh, the last 15 minutes that I drove. <laughs> and, you know, it's just, it's just the habit of driving from uh, places that you go to constantly. That's a great thing. Our minds, excuse me, our minds are simply wanting to be lazy. They're wanting to be comfortable. And so anything that's a pattern, anything that's repetitive, our mind likes that because then it can go into using less energy to do the same thing, which is great for habits that are that are good habits because it's training our mind to subconsciously do them and us not having to, to think about it. But on the other side, you also got the bad habits where it's like, yeah, yeah uh, not not the best ones to subconsciously have. And, and, you know, all of us, all of us have bad habits, but it's just that continual of which side do you want and having to break through to be able to, to have those habits. So to answer that, you know, why question off of, off of yours as well, because that's just how life is. And that's just how our brain works. Our brain likes comfortability and that's, that's just how we work. Right. I have to throw out real quick though, but did you ever drive home from uh, Walmart and suddenly you find yourself in the church parking lot thinking that's not where I meant to go? Oh, several you times. Not actually go in a certain way. Yeah. Yeah, not the church parking lot, but yeah, so several different places. 
I, one time we even had it where we were driving up to Idaho because that's where my in-laws were. And halfway to it is a little town, Burley. That's where we stopped for gas and for food. And automatically, I started driving back towards Utah and Ogden instead of going to the Twin Falls route, which is yeah. way up towards where our in-laws are. And my, I start turning and my wife's like, what are you doing? And I skirt off the road, <laughs> yeah. skirt off, get back in my lane to go. And I'm like, sorry, sorry, I, I was on autopilot. I was thinking about going home. So it, it, it's so true. It's so true. Happens yeah. many, many times. Which I think is your point about good habits versus bad habits. Um, you know, habits can be a tool for us to make things easier, but we also need to make sure we're creating the good habits and we're intentionally creating good habits rather than just falling into things because we've done it before, because it's easy. But being intentional about creating those habits, I think is the, the first big key about why habits. Yeah. How do, we, how do we start that? Ian, as you've looked in your life, how have you started a new habit? That has worked, right? We can, we can go into things that haven't worked. I can give plenty of examples of things that haven't <laughs> yeah. worked. I'm sure you can as well. But for ones that have worked, how did you start and how did you just keep it in your life? Yeah, um, I'm going to start out with that with my the quote we gave at the beginning of it. It's, it's more fun to read about changing your life than it is to change your life. Um, when you're thinking about habits, it's easy to think about habits you want to have. It's hard to start actually doing them. And I think the, the first step is be intentional about what habits you want to create. Um, so, okay, I'm going to go with a, a religious example here. Um, so I like to just say a prayer of my food before I eat. To get into that habit, I made sure to say a prayer when other people were around me, um, especially my family. We sit down, um, especially as I had kids and wanted to teach them these things. I was intentional about saying, okay, we need to say a prayer. So by putting it out there with other people, so other people expect that from me, um, maybe a little bit of positive peer pressure, but some of those habits that are manifested outwardly, let people know about them. Say, hey, I always do this. Um, you know, I always say, today is gonna be a great day every time I walk through a door frame. Um, and then you tell the person next to you, oh, I always say that, that's a habit I have. It reinforces it in your mind. So I think a, a first way is, at least for the overt habits, is to share them with people. Um, say, oh, hey, this is the habit I have. I'm trying to create this habit. And give yourself a positive reinforcement and a little bit of positive peer pressure of other people to help remind you and make you feel a little bit more guilty if you forget to and they call you out on it. Hey, didn't you say you were gonna say, today's a great day and I, I didn't hear anything when you walked through that door frame? Yeah. So, so then you say it, then you say it louder, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And sometimes saying it louder or doing something a little bit um, exaggerated at the beginning, um, making a little bit bigger deal of it, gives you sometimes your own reward in your mind as you do those things, turns it into a more positive experience. Um, so I'll... Yeah, I guess that's the first step is keep it in your mind and make it a positive experience and get help from people around you to remind you. Mm, I love that. I love that. The one thing that, that clicked in my mind when I'm starting new habits is that positive, positive reinforcement, but also oh, I'm trying to figure out the phrase you, you said, but it's when you do it out in public and not just in private. I'll go with positive reinforcement. Um, yeah, I can't remember the word I used now. <laughs> yeah, which is fine, right? So I can't remember his name. It's Joseph, insert last name, the third. He's a wonderful individual who speaks at Tony Robbins' um, Unleash the Power Within events. He's one of the speakers there. And Joseph, one of the things that he talked about was with his daughter, 
when they when he would enter a grocery store going through that 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 threshold of the door he would put his hands out and he would just walk he was just walking with his hands out basically like in his mind being like i am here i am awesome and it was to build up uh that confidence and it helped that it did it in public little did he know after doing it several times and basically i think all he does it all the time now there was one time when his daughter they were walking into a store and I think he was going to get a shopping cart and she walked in and she just had her hands up and said, I am here and I am awesome. And you know, in Walmart, they have either like a Burger King or a Subway or something like that. Yeah. Next to it. A bunch of people were in Subway and they looked over and they started clapping for the little girl. Like what one amazing that she, she learned that from her dad. But two, that positive reinforcement from complete strangers of just this is amazing. This is like this is awesome. And I am sure that she fell on cloud nine that day. So that positive reinforcement, well, with all the other things you said, what really helps when building a habit. I think you you've got to have some positive reinforcement. Um, you know, and when you're looking at habits you want to create, there has to be a reason you want to create it. Um, you know, you don't say, I hate Brussels sprouts, so I'm going to make it a habit to eat Brussels sprouts once every day. Well, there's no purpose in that. There's no reason to do it. There's no reward coming out of it. Um, so when you have a, you're creating a habit, you've got to have something positive, something that's a reason you want to have that. And if there's no positive reason for it, then there's no reason to, to even work on it. Um, you know, if you know that your mother-in-law makes Brussels sprouts and you need to look good in front of her, so you need to get used to eating them, now you've got something, some reward from it. <laughs> but, um, you know, something is going to, that you want more, um, and you've got to focus on that, that goal. What is it that that, habit is going to do for you what do you really want out of it otherwise there's no real purpose there's no reason to do it so the motivation um i probably just said motivation is the first key um, you've got to have a why or else there's no do if there's no why if that makes sense yeah yeah it makes total sense whenever i think of specifically motivation i think of it in two different ways to get somewhere to create a habit to reach a goal you either need to find out how you can get motivation every single day which it's you know it's kind of difficult but it's possible to get that motivation or two learn how to get motivated enough to be able to get the habit to be disciplined with it because usually motivation is very temporary and it doesn't last long. But the discipline part where whether you are up or down, feeling it, not feeling it, that discipline part is where it comes to the consistency and where it starts to build that habit. Yeah, and I, I love that because it's the discipline. It takes some discipline to create a habit, but it doesn't take much discipline to continue a habit. And um, I've got a a little thing I, I work out about motivation, that there's four types of motivation. There's fear of punishment, love of reward, a sense of duty, and then a sense of love. And the sense of duty in there really is habits as well. Um, it's just what you do because you're supposed to do it. It doesn't require a lot of thoughts, but it's consistently there. Um, now, if I walk into a store and I have to open the door and I see somebody behind me, I don't stop and say, should I hold the door for them? I stand there and hold the door for them. I developed a habit of doing that to look and see if there's somebody close behind me and to hold the door. It doesn't require effort. It doesn't require thinking. It's not something that I consider myself to be a great person because I do it because it's simply a habit that doesn't require thought, doesn't require reward, doesn't require anything. Um, you just... You do it and you move on. And I think my life is better because that's my habit. And hopefully it makes a few other people smile. 
Yeah. And, and it's interesting. I'd love I love to jump into your thoughts on a two word two word phrase. But before I do that, let me let me trajectory it trajectory it in. I don't know if that's the right thing. Based on what you said, inter- yeah. Based on what you said, I I see that so many times, especially in your example, where I'll just go to open the door and you know it's just me, just open the door. And while I'm holding it and pushing it out, I'll just glance behind me to see if there's any movement. And it's not that I'm thinking about it. It's just, yeah, that's what I do. Just to see if someone's there so I can hold a door open for them. And there's a level of what I would call habit stacking that we do, which is one of my favorite things. And it got introduced to me. Funny enough, he, for for everyone who who loves anime, you'll you'll be get excited about this. There's an anime out there called My Hero Academia, super huge, and one of the main characters, his name's Deku, and while he him and a couple of his friends are training with the number one hero at the time, the the number one hero whose name is Endeavor, he tells them that if you are working on multiple things, get good at the things that are that you're doing so much that you don't have to think about it and then add just one more thing onto it right so it's making everything that you do great already a habit of subconscious habit and then adding on one more thing and only that one thing until that becomes self con- not self conscious uh subconscious And then you can add on another and another. And I think that's so important with habit stacking. And I don't want to say more because I want to hear hear it from you, Ian, your thoughts on habit stacking. Okay. Um, Love habit stacking, and I need to focus a little more on that. (laughs) Um, But I love the the concept, and that fits into something I was thinking about as we were preparing for this. Um, I work in finance a lot as well, and the greatest concept in finance out there more than anything else is called compound interest where you invest some you earn some interest and you reinvest that interest with the principal and in time it makes huge changes if you look at the first couple of years of investment it's very minuscule the difference in it but you look 20 30 years down the road and that what that compound interest does makes massive massive changes I think habits and habit stacking is the same thing. Um, I actually put um, compound habits I wrote down in my notes here. Um, So rather than compound interest, compound habits. You make one little change, one little good habit you add. And then that multiplies itself. And you add one more little one on top of it. And pretty soon you end up having huge changes because of these small habits you put in. Um, And the whole concept of habit stacking is a great way to do that. Um, You know, I get up in the morning and and, uh, I have some vitamins and I have some medicine I take in the morning and it's a a certain thing. It's like, okay, I wanna have my little healthy drink. So I, I have that with my medicine, with my vitamins. And there's just a, a few minutes that that's the time period for that. Um, I've made that uh, kind of stacked those things together into one group. And other than that, I need to work on this principle. I'll be honest. Um, like I said, it's more fun to read about it than it is to do it. Um, yeah. So doing it as part of, of, uh, my goal is to make those changes, but, um, Sorry, I'm jumping back to that concept for a second of doing things and doing these habits and looking for these changes. One of my favorite books uh, is by an author, Hiram Smith, um, uh, 10 Natural Laws to Successful Time and Life Management, I think is the title. And he makes a, a comment in there that your actions are a reflection of who you truly are. Um, not the ideas, not your intentions, not all that, but what you actually do. So when we actually create these habits, if we're willing to actually put the effort in and to do that, that's reflecting who we really are inside. 
And I think who we really are can change and can grow and can progress as we put in the effort to these habits. Um, we make the habit to become better, to do something to become better. And as we do that, we actually do become better. And we move that direction incrementally at first. And then as we get more and more habits and stack those together, that compound habit interest grows faster and faster and bigger and bigger. And we can become the person that we really want to be through those small steps at first. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. It reminded me of a quote that you judge yourself on your intentions. Everyone else judges you on your actions, which you Very can go true. into several things yeah. with that. Right. But when it comes down to it, we might think that we're great because we have all these great ideas and all these fantastic habits and goals and dreams and, everything that we want to work towards, but unless we do something with it, 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 it's basically for not like I love reading books, but if I keep the information inside my head and don't use it at all, it's as if I didn't read the book in the first place. It's when that application comes in that I feel is when you start making yourself better. Like you're saying, and it's not those, it's not like big, massive steps. It's those small little incremental steps here and there that get you to where you want to go, right? And from those small little steps is where it creates those bigger habits. And we talk, uh, and many people talk about uh, transformations that we have. Well, transformations don't happen in a day. Unless, you know, unless you want to lose weight and you go get like a liposuction or something, then it might happen like that. But that's the, that's the, 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 I think it's excuse, Ex except it's not, it's not the law. It's the excess. I, I'm, I'm trying to remember the word, but basically for everyone else who doesn't get liposuction, you got to work out. You got to do the little daily habits, keep yourself hydrated, eat right. Do those small things, and then over months, over years, that's when you'll see the once-in-a-lifetime transformation that isn't like an overnight success, but more of a, yeah, it took me seven years and 18 days of to be an overnight success. Yep. Um, so true. And those, you know, that intention of what you're doing is a huge thing, you know, if your intention is to be healthy, liposuction is not to get you healthy. <laughs> um, it's to create a physical shell that you like, um, as opposed to wanting to actually be better and be healthier. Um, so if you actually want to be healthier and be happy with your body, you've got to create those habits. And you, you mentioned in there, we talked again about small habits and I want to, to jump to the title of the book, because when I first picked it up, even though it says it right on the cover, I totally missed the point. And it was not what I was expecting. I thought atomic, like an atomic explosion, these huge bombs, this huge transformation habits. And he's talking about atoms, the tiniest little building blocks of all matter. Um, and you change that tiny little piece that's going to ripple through everything um, and create the major transformations that we want to by those small little changes at the beginning. Um, as we were talking, I just jotted on my notepad here. Um, goals are who we want to be. Habits are who we are. Um, mm, we like need to that. change who we are if we're going to get to be who we want to be, um, which is why goals set me up for failure so often. It's because I put an idea that I like, but I don't put the tools to get there, which are the small incremental habits that are going to move me that direction. Um, and small because the big habits are scary and hard and I'm lazy and don't want to do those. <laughs> so um, let me set a habit to do push-ups when I get up in the morning and I'll worry about getting to 100 down the road. But if I start doing some that builds it up that makes that difference in my life from the beginning 
Yeah, it, it really is just the small things. And I, I'm sitting here, you know, I'm talking to everyone being like, yeah, you need to do the small habits. I'm sitting here thinking about the habits I have that I'm trying to work on and to and those goals that I want to achieve. And sometimes I think about the 100% goal rather than the 2% or 1% actions that lead up to that 100%. And a lot of times when I think of the 100%, I get that procrastination paralysis where it seems way too big for me to reach. And there's so many steps in between. And I haven't written anything down. I've just thought about the goal that I wanted and all the steps that need to happen. And because I haven't taken any action towards it, there's an over, there's a mental overbearing of everything that's going on to where I'm just paralyzed. Uh, not, not literally paralyzed, but goal wise paralyzed, or I guess action wise paralyzed of not doing anything and procrastinating on simply starting because I'm unclear of where I need to start. Where if I simply focus on that, 1% or 2%. I have a concept called 2% action that I love where it's basically think of like you reverse engineer your goal and you think of the next step you need to do. And it's 2% of that hundred percent goal where you, where it's enough to get a little fire under you to stretch you and get you out of that comfort zone. But at the same time, doesn't paralyze you. And so it's really about, like you said, Ian, small little steps of daily consistency that don't have to be perfect. You don't have to hit a hundred pushups a day. If your goal is to do a hundred pushups a day, simply start. Because if you start by one, you're going to in the moment feel more inclined to, to do more, but just go into it saying, I'm simply doing one more, just one push up. And whether you do one push-up or not, that is one million percent better than simply not starting at all. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I set a goal many years ago. I went to a high school reunion and I had an idea for a book that I wanted to write. And I left the reunion and thought, OK, next reunions in five years, I'm going to write my book by then. OK, five years later, I hadn't done the first page because... It was a big goal way in the future. And, you know, it wasn't until I got my plane ticket to go back to the reunion that I realized I had two weeks to write this book and publish it. And then it was, it wasn't a goal I could do. Um, and everyone I talked to is, oh, just set a goal to sit down and write for 15 minutes every morning. Even if you just write, I don't know what to write. I don't know what to write. Or all work and all play makes Ian a dull boy. Um, Whatever, you know, just be in the habit of writing. Um, so start, you know, do something small and take an action. If you don't do anything, what's the sense? You know, sure, it's fun to think about it. But like you said, people judge you by your actions, not by your intentions. Because um, they can't see your intentions. So one yeah. small step um, tomorrow morning, actually, I should say, let's say tomorrow morning, I'll do a push up. Um, today, I will do a push up. <laughs> Not going to put it off till tomorrow. There you go. Um, but yeah, yeah make start. a commitment that's easy. Yeah. Yeah. And start today. And text not me tomorrow. tonight and ask me. Yeah. Sorry, what was that last part? Okay, text me tonight and ask me if I did it. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Let, let's, let's keep each other accountable, which, you know, is a whole nother, uh, whole nother topic we can get on. But as, as we're wrapping up, as we're wrapping up this part and, you know, we, we we'll do a couple episodes on this, uh, on habits and the principles from the, from this amazing book by James Clear. Um, as we're wrapping up, one of the things that you said, Ian, stuck out and it's, it's something we talked about in the beginning, um, even before we jumped on. And I kind of like made a side joke about it. But sometimes we're focused more on the goal rather than focused on like the long term of what we're focused on the goal rather than the things that get us there. And so I said before the thing about 
how I like we we as a bunch of people love information porn basically is because we love those dopamine hits. We love to just learn things and don't as very low commitment to apply them to our lives. But it's very rare, unfortunately, where people actually apply the things that they want to, to get to where they need to go. And so I'd love to, to leave it, uh, love to hear your last comment, Ian, on it. Uh, before I do that, just, just for everyone, just remember, you know, small, small little habits, small little goals. Um, well, I guess small little, ha small little actions to get the habit to your long-term goals is a good thing to think about. Uh, Ian, what would you like to end with? Yeah. Um, just what you said, the idea of, um, you know, the information porn, we love to read. We love to say how many books we've read and pick up new ones and be able to give a quote or something from a book to throw it out there. And it's, you know, it's a dopamine hit. We feel important. We feel smart, all of these things. But if we're not changing our life with it, it doesn't do any good. Um, a simple example for me, I love music. Um, I still listen to vinyl records. I have a vinyl record collection and I'll go out when there's a new record I want and I'll buy it and I'm excited to buy it. It's a dopamine hit. When I get it, I bring it home. But then I don't quite want to open it up yet because I like the idea. It's all sealed and I've got records that I haven't listened to because I was more excited about buying them than I was about listening to them, um, which is really dumb when I think about it. <laughs> Because what good does it do to buy it if you don't listen to it? If your goal is not, well, I shouldn't say even goal. If your excitement, your motivation is not the outcome, it's not the change it brings in your life, then there's you're not going to follow through. It's not going to bring you happiness. It's not going to make you a better person. Um, you know, I, I there's an old saying, uh, sitting in church doesn't make you a Christian any more than sitting in a garage makes you an automobile. Um, <laughs> if you're not doing things, yeah, if you're not doing it, you're not taking the actions, you're not transforming your life, those little incremental things to move you in that direction, it's useless. It's, you may as well, you know, sit in the garage and call yourself a car. Um, that's how much benefit you get out of it. So have a desire to be better and that vision of what you want to be, that's got to be the motivation. That's got to be the foundation of any habit that you start it has to be a real change, not the habit itself. Absolutely. What, what, a, what a great thing to end. And I think that for, for, as we go, as we think about the next episode, I think jumping into clarity on goals and habits and intentions would be a great thing to cover because it feels like that's what we're transitioning into when we talk about atomic habits. But to, to, to leave this episode with a challenge is to think about your own goals and habits that you have in your own life and really see, am I just interested in the result that's going to be coming from the goal? Or am I interested also in the journey and the person I'm going to be on the other side? So think about what you want and your goals and everything. And James Clear, Atomic Habits, fantastic book, uh, an easy and proven way to build good habits and break good ones. It's a great one that we start off this episode and we'll have several more with, with that. But without further ado, thank you, Ian, for, for being on. Thank you. Thank you, Willie, for your, for myself to yeah, be on thank as you, well. Willie. And more importantly, Thank you, everyone who has listened to this point, because it means a lot for one to us, but more, it should mean a lot to yourself because you have a desire to change your habits and you are interested in how to do that. So continue to improve your life and be the best version you can be. And until the next episode, we will see you later. Thank you. Thank you.